television, you can see temperatures looking good. Zero degrees at the top, minus two in the finish area. And look at that vertical drop. Uh, it is a long old racetrack, 4.27 kilometers long. Uh, and it's a great opportunity. And I'm delighted to say that sitting alongside me at Drake in the commentary box is uh, none other than Marcel Mathis, former Austrian World Cup ski racer, a couple of World Cup podiums to his name. Marcel, welcome. To your sport. Welcome to the country box. Thanks, Ed. Super excited to be here. I think we're in for a, for a proper treat today. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah, fair. Let's take us through what we're going to expect to see today with the POV run. Yeah, definitely. So on top here, the Russisprung, it's really important to gain all the speed as much as possible because that will that will go all the way to the home shop. Um, and we can now see on the left-hand side, that's where the start for the first race was. So you can see that fall away, which is crucially important to keep your speeds on the base, but still try and make the turns. Yeah, there's a slight fall away through here, isn't it? So you want to try and desperately run as flat ski as you possibly can. Obviously, you've got to try and stay up to the skiers, right? But this is where the prep comes for the hood shot. Exactly. You come in with way more speed than you did on the first on the first downhill. So you need to really prep for the hood shot because today it's going to be it's going to be uh, very crucial. So if you press there, and then you make sure that you are fully prepared for this um, transition here over the minch counter and then uh, ride into the Canadian corner and stay on top there. We saw how brutal it was over the last couple of days. Such big ripples on that left foot. It's to try and keep smooth and carry speed into the Kerner S. Exactly. And now here, there are a couple of ways to do it. You're either going to do a shimmy or you're going to do a little snow plow, a power plow. And then you try and keep very close to that gate and then very close to the netting here and carry all the speed away into the flat. Uh, we talked about it the last couple of days, uh, the speed coming in, but more crucially, the speed coming out, coming under the Vasa station uh, through the tunnel here, because this whole section it depends on how quickly you come out of the Kerner Ness, really, doesn't it? Exactly, and you know you need to carry every speed you can um, into, into the long and dry, and into those long, winded turns. Um, where you, you either win the race or you're going to lose the race. Uh, we saw yesterday a couple of key gates uh, into right into this section coming in. Uh, truck to there is a slight fall away, but obviously the, the dapple light coming from shade to sun to shade again uh, makes it difficult for the races and then into the famous uh, Hanigschus. Yeah, this is like the fastest, the fastest bit of the on the World Cup tour. We saw records breaking, uh, record breaking speeds here, and you want to make sure that you keep all the speed that you already took from Lang and Ryan into this section. And then over um, over the Stylus Boden, right into Silverhorn's room, where we saw a terrible crash from Prince Roy yesterday. So this is going to be uh, an important part, and you know you will have to for two minutes from here. <laughs> yeah, so, and you still got a couple of the toughest turns uh, to take in. Exactly. And now you can see the the Zile, but you need to keep really tight to this gate, get all the pressure you can, and then up into the finish. I do like the you know, way that the POV camera runs. I think we've had about three or four different camera riders down there. Obviously, not one, none of, nobody can live up to three minutes worth of downhill racing for those guys. As we can see, uh, them coming in, and that's sort of an, an example of the shimmy. Uh, that's Berto, isn't it, coming down nice. through there? Berto and Poitra think they're still, still having fun going down that track again. Yeah, the dream. That's the way now. Next up is a certain Mr. Marco Odorak running out of things to say about this guy. And he's been writing the record books last season and he looks like he's continuing that fame. Picked up his first ever World Cup victory. That's the same in downhill and that's the same a similar mistake that he saw from his teammate, but he manages to keep it on the deck. Yeah, he has, he has gained so much experience now, also on the flats, but he always was a bit struggling. Uh, there was never really an issue on the, on the technical terms. But he looks on two skis, looks very solid here. Big jump, bit of a out of, out of balance, but this is where he really excels usually. Beautiful turns, lovely transition into Canadian corner. And bang straight down into the tuck position, confidence high. The only person in the Friday, Thursday downhill to arc this turn. What's he gonna do today? Now we see he's going, he is going full risk into this turn. He's really trying to get everything he can out of this speed-wise, and he is top speed. You could see it, couldn't you? Absolutely no feather, no drift, no nothing, just arc to arc. Yes, he did a little shimmy, but it was carb to carb, and the guy is Unbelievable. Motoring.
He gained 1.4 seconds on this on this section. That is the Mark Audemars at its best. That certainly is, and he's going to be glued to his tuck position. The Super G skills uh, that have brought him so much success on the more technical of the speed discipline tours. It coming into its own now, slightly wide in that transition, coming towards the jump. Just the forehand extras and the guys motoring. Keep your eye on the speed gun because Mark Audemars bringing the heat on day three in Vegan. You can see he's really trying to, to use both of his skis to, to gain some speed. And he did it so well today. He had a huge speed at the Hanek shoes. Now a great jump. He kept his position and he is keep he keeps going. 1.87. Yeah, look at that. He's absolutely flying. Nearly two seconds in front of Teo, sending a message back to the stop. And he talks about being a little bit tired, but he doesn't look like it. Just sneaking inside the last gate. Marco Odoman leads in Vengen yet again. Can he make it two downhills on the trot? The Swiss fans and the Swiss supporters are going crazy. Marco Odermatt knows that that was a big day and a big run. And he's got a fantastic opportunity to do it again. But a certain Mr. Sarazan is next in the gate. Unbelievable run from Odermatt. I think that was nearly perfect. You could see it through the, uh, through the current S. He really tried as much as he could.